Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Awesome. It's a, it's a bright and sunny Tuesday morning here in lovely downtown Indianapolis. Did everybody have a good time at the uh, networking event? Was that a little different for everybody, I hope? Yes? Yes? Okay. I kind of told everybody, if you, if you didn't meet somebody new out there, um, please come see us because we didn't do our job or I'm going to blame on you because it's your fault. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to network with somebody, that's what this is about. It's about meeting new people, finding you know the, the new network that's out there from an energy perspective. So, um, Ben Reitzman, uh, CEO, of Battery Innovation Center, excited to uh, to really uh, welcome everybody here today. Uh, an awesome, awesome time. Uh, I, my kids decided to put this up for me today. They they showed this. I showed them the slide presentation, and they said, well, "Why why isn't your headshot in there?" Like, Nobody wants to see my face. I've got you know kind of the face for uh, uh, radio. And uh, they said, well, I know a cute one, and uh, this is one that my sister actually found uh, that I didn't actually know they'd been taken. They'd been buried in kind of a family archive somewhere. So and I thought it was funny because my kids said, do you see that your shirt says engineer on it? So uh, I thought that was pretty awesome. So apparently it was a railroad engineer back in the day, uh, now an electrical engineer, but it was awesome to have that. So, and also um, notable, uh, I think some common connections here as we talk about later on, the founding of Battery Innovation Center by Captain Chuck Osota. Uh, my grandfather, um, uh, Edwin Dick, was also served uh, in the Navy as well. So uh, excited to see you know those kind of connections. So the first thing I want to do here is make sure I thank uh, everybody. Um, for all of you here, uh, thank you for coming. Uh, this is a sold out event again this year. Uh, we're gonna have to find a bigger venue uh, or we're gonna have to find some places where we can bring some more uh, cool products uh, and also put more people inside here. So. Uh, first, I want to say, um, I'm going to have a few people stand up, I'm going to call them out. They didn't know this. Uh, I was, I don't tell them ahead of time because then they go hide off. Uh, but I'd like to have Elizabeth, uh, Heather, and Teresa stand up from Battery Innovation Center. I don't know where they are there. Please give them a huge hand. Um, those three work tirelessly to make this all possible. Um, by the way, Battery Innovation Center does not have an events creation team or anything else. There's Heather and Teresa, thank you. We do not have an events creation team. These are all folks who work every day to help every one of you with your next generation energy products. And then they take the additional time of their day to make these kind of things happen. So, you know, that's you know, that's the kind of, you know, big com or small companies working big as part of that. I also want to take a chance uh, to thank uh, the Battery Innovation Center team. So um, for everybody, you know, this crew is not huge, but they do big things, uh, or they do big things, big. Uh, if you would, um, all the Battery Innovation Center crew would love to have you stand up, please. The other one is to our, our board. I won't ask them to stand unless they want to, uh, but to Chad, Paul, Brad and David, uh, absolutely appreciate your guys' continued leadership. Um, they all, again, I, I tell this story and I'll, I'll probably quit this year because, uh, you know, it's, it's too far in the past now, but as we think about it, you know, the original uh, setup of BIC, uh, we all met in a, in a room that would have, you know, a couple tables would have met everybody that was there uh, from a luncheon perspective. And so, you know, we've come this far to however many hundred people are here today, hundreds of companies that have come in. Uh, so we thank you all uh, for being here for sure. Um, with that, um, I want to, oh, sorry, I also want to thank the event staff. Um, one that I really want to point out singly as well, who's been a behind the scenes uh, champion for BIC for the longest time, and he does amazing things. Him and a small crew, which is usually his brother, is Tabani Machazi, who with Video Pivot, he's up in the booth right now uh, making everything happen. So appreciate him as well. Please give Tabani and his brother a hand as well. So I, I hope what everybody sees today is, uh, you know, again, you know, small, small things uh, bring big opportunities, bring big things that are out there as well. So I, hopefully I don't have to tell the mission of the BIC if you're not familiar with Battery Innovation Center. You know, it, it started under the vision of Captain Chuck Lasota along with Chad and Brad and Paul and actually Ian at the time. Uh, and David and I came in, uh, you know, uh, during a transition time uh, with Captain Lasota, which we'll, we'll share a little bit more about that later. But, you know, that, that mission and vision really hasn't changed. Now, our, our focus has, you know, really where we, you know, kind of were, uh, 
really pushed a lot of work around our warfighter, uh, the Department of Defense and Department of Energy, and then doing some innovation work as, as part of our uh, mantra. Today, it's all about innovation. We are 100% commercial. So again, you know, it's awesome to see and, you know, and had some conversations. Teresa Lasota joined us here today along with her family. Really appreciate them coming. Sorry, I'll get emotional on that every time. Um, I, mean, I appreciate them coming uh, because I think it's awesome to see the mission and vision uh, still continue. And so our features have changed a little bit over time, uh, as David and I have had to do, you know, along the way. We had to make a lot of adaptations. The team has been resilient the entire time. Uh, we've got some of our original members that are still with us. You're going to see in the crowd, we've got a bunch of our original members that are now with companies that we've worked with and helped build and grow over these years. So it's about this big ecosystem. It's about catalyzing uh, what's next. And so I, I think that's hopefully the, the common, thing for every, common theme for everybody. But, you know, BIC has continued to grow. Um, you know, we today, uh, hopefully there's uh, no Ohio State people here today. I say that because Gary Parker's not here today, by the way. Him and I get into this because I was at IUPUI. Purdue, but he was always joking that it was, no, that's not, that's the, that's the side school of Purdue, uh, and always joked with him that he was at the Ohio State, so uh, I told him I was going to throw this in, even though he wasn't able to join us, was, you know, BIC today being that advanced energy commercialization facility, and that's, that's not the name we gave ourselves, we hear that continually from our customers, is you guys really have the secret sauce that has a ton of capability, and it's not about the equipment, it's not about the facility, it's about the team that's assembled there, and it's also about the customers we work with, is there's an amazing set of customers and partners and members that have made this, this all possible. And so you'll see our, our capabilities have grown um, uh, tremendously. You know, what started out as building cells and testing cells and doing some routine, you know, testing is now turned into anything and everything. In fact, that's one of the things our team loves is, you know, bring us a new challenge, bring us the stuff that nobody else wants to do. We're going to help you figure that out. And that's, that's been really fun uh, in that collaborative environment. Um, you know, as we think about how we've collaborated and convened now, you know, what started out as really uh, two companies working with BIC, I think uh, Dave and I said, I think when we counted the number we came in, there was about six. You know, Chuck had done a great job of getting that basis started uh, for sure. Today, north of 500 companies we work with uh, all over the globe. Uh, you know, active, you know, active list is you know north of 100 to 150. They're from every walk of life. These are the the biggest and the baddest, uh, all the way to the, the the brightest and the newest as part of that. So I think that's a, a testament to what's going on. Um, you know, hundreds and hundreds of programs. In fact, as I was looking through, I think we're into the thousands now of programs and platforms. Uh, the short courses have been a tremendous outreach. Uh, there's a lot of you I've seen in this room that have come through our training courses, that we've helped you create training courses to help get your staff for this current generation. And I think that's the thing is we're constantly in innovation, but we're already in today as well. And so um, I think that's the important part about electrification. You're going to hear from us is we're not talking about 2030 and 2035. You know, those are in everybody's forecast and it needs to be there. But we're, we're already doing that today. That's that's what BIC's mission has always been is how do we take what is tomorrow and pull it into today or at least in, or sorry, long time out into today or tomorrow and not wait so long for that. So um, we've also had privilege that BIC's model has expanded, uh, you know, through our customers expanded outside of Indiana. In fact, uh, very few of our companies reside here in Indiana. We have a, quite a few of them represented here today, but the bulk actually don't have any presence in Indiana. In fact, some of them don't have any presence in the United States, shy of BIC. And so we think that's a pretty good testament that, uh, you know, a little rural building in southern Indiana on the middle of kind of nowhere 69 is becoming somewhere to be as part of that. Um, that also plays into a national thought leadership as well. We've had uh, been now joined Lybridge, which is part of the, you know, the uh, current administration's one of their how do we grow uh, lithium and how do we have um, the U.S. have a keen presence, uh, a thought leadership and an engagement uh, to help uh, have our play from a worldwide perspective. And then also one newly formed that was here in Indiana. And so I'm going to you're going to hear me at least give some props to Indiana along the way. We are uh, I'm a Hoosier born uh, again. Hicks and Sticks uh, corn kid uh, that grew up doing that, um, but have traveled all over the world. But Indiana's been home uh, along the way 
uh, for sure, and is my current home today, is the EV Products Commission. As we think about ways in which Indiana is leading, um, the EV Products Commission was one of the first commissions actually formed by, by a state, so Indiana was a thought leader in doing that. Um, not only did we get the group together, but we actually had key actions. So this wasn't get together and start talking about what we may do. It was to actually get together and identify what the state of Indiana is already doing. What are the companies here doing? What are we doing in education? What are we doing in leadership? What are we doing in transforming our workforce? What are we doing about including this technology? So that report, I'm giving a shameless plug for that because last week, last Friday, uh, the EV Products Commission report went out. It's actually available out on the Indiana Economic Development Corporation's webpage. You can go out there and find it. You'll find that under one of the key pillars that the state of Indiana is focused on, which is energy. And within that is battery and hydrogen and others as well. So you'll see that's where a lot of these common connections come in. So while Battery Innovation Center is in our name, that's probably for the longest time why we've kind of used BIC. So um, by the way, that does get us confused occasionally with the uh, the pins and the lighters and the uh, uh, the uh, type type removers, um, but we use that now because it's it's really past batteries and it has been for some amount of time. And then from a uh, from a growing and track perspective, so this is our connection to the state of Indiana. Um, you know, through our uh, match programs and others, a lot of you have been a part of that. Um, we we've been looking at how do we. For the folks that are in Indiana, how do we keep your key presence here? How do we get you to do your innovations here? And then I think this is really bold. I mean, uh, out of David Roberts, um, out of Secretary Chambers, out of our governor, the state has said, um, you know, a lot of them just kind of focus on what happens in their, their state borders. We've said, how do we go outside of our state borders? How do we bring people here and get them engaged in work? Uh, and with that, we kind of, I'll just be honest, we kind of opened the door to why Indiana. And that has been a huge, huge opportunity for BIC and for the IEDC uh, today, bringing hundreds of clients from all over the globe. Some of them, again, never been to Indiana. We have tons of unique visitors and guests that have never been to Indiana, let alone beautiful southern Indiana, uh, which I uh, continue to love as a rural, rural guy myself. Um, we've had tons come in for training and education for that opportunity. Uh, and then we've got 10 incubators here in Indiana. So um, actually, I believe only one of those companies is from Indiana. The other nine companies came from folks, places where you see kind of the battery ecosystem in the news, if you will, which is out of California, out of Boston, out of Florida, out of North Carolina, um, out of uh, Texas, and some others. So we're, we're very, very privileged to have them here interacting in Indiana, and we're helping expose them to the Indiana ecosystem, but also showing Indiana's outreach. So Ultimately, you know, that's kind of the update. So um, the other one to note, uh, you know, we had an awesome expansion of Battery Innovation Center this year. We were able to uh, purchase out our facility and our assets. So Greene County and, and the state and other partners uh, helped put together the original uh, BIC and helped put together the original kind of funding for the first operation. Uh, we have grown and expanded so much uh, that we actually were able to buy that out uh, ahead of our schedule. And so that's amazing that BIC is, as a P3 is now entirely on its own, uh, which is a, you know, a fantastic testament to the team's work uh, along with the leadership and also where our customers helped us head. Uh, with that, just recently, we also partnered with what's been, uh, a, a, I'll call it a sister firm for the longest time, but from the beginning was, um, was the group who really helped found, helped kind of come up with the thought idea along with Chuck and others, which was Energy Systems Network. So Energy Systems Network just recently merged. Uh, we've got uh, Paul Mitchell leading that initiative. And now together, verticals that we've worked on from kind of program and platform uh, thought leadership out into the visionary stage, all the way through the operational side of BIC. And one of the programs I wanted to highlight that really starts to fold into that is like the Indian Autonomous Challenge that you'll see here. Hopefully you got a chance to see the car out there with the IDC logos. For anyone who didn't pay too close attention, there's no cockpit in that car. It's taken up by, you know, a million dollar plus computer system. Uh, you know, it is now competing for high speed races. In fact, you know, there's events already going on, you know, as we sit here today. Um, so an awesome competition. You're also gonna see some other work around hydrogen. So BIC, you know, again, Battery Innovation Center, what is, why, why would batteries? Well, you know, hydrogen and electrification, hybridization is all a keen play. So all those play together. So that's what we're looking at is about building that ecosystem. So again, while batteries in our name, it's much more than that. Um, but know that also, you know, kind of the theme of today is battery intentional. So that's, that's what we're here for today. So, you know, what's next? And then uh, 
obviously will be on with the show here momentarily is expansion of BICS footprint. So we are looking to get uh, some additional facilities. We're working with some key partners on next opportunities. So I'll say, I'll say stay tuned for that. Can't share much more today, but there's some awesome things. You know, our customers have told us you guys have got to continue to, to help stay ahead of us if you're going to stay out on the innovation curve. We're, we're looking for this. We need this. We're exploring this. We're considering this. And so there's some huge opportunities there um, that are in the wings. Um, further growing our team, I'm privileged to say that when Dave and I started, I think we had, uh, Tyson can probably help correct me, but I think it was eight, eight or nine, uh, seven, eight, nine employees. Today, 30 employees, uh, which is amazing, you know, in, in that many years. We are 10 years old, officially from formation, technically nine years in our current facility. So, um, and recognize that we had to make a pretty big business shift, you know, early on, which took a little bit to not only start up, but kind of restart as part of that as well. The, the deeper collaboration, again, we mentioned around working on the hydrogen side. So how do we get involved? Is that as part of electrification? And then starting to have more of a nationwide impact. As part of Lightbridge, uh, we have been asked, um, at, at, when I first started in Lightbridge, there was all these discussions around, you know, we need to create P3s and we need to create models for states and regions to maybe move forward in electrification. And, you know, we'd love to find a model, you know, that's like that or how do we all create one? And about, you know, fast forward about three months in, was having conversations with every single one of the subgroups where they called and said, hey, I don't want to tell the rest of our group, but can you like tell us more about the BIC model? Because it sounds like kind of what we're all talking about here. Like, this seems like what we all want and what we want to do. Like, are you guys, like, is that secret? Or, you know, is that something Indiana's keeping close? Or what can we say? And it's like, no, that's, that's why we're here. And so you're going to see in here that um, from Lightbridge perspective, the proposals that went into, uh, into our nation's capital um, you'll see in six of the seven, the seventh one didn't have to do uh, with a specific, otherwise, you know, they're going to reference BIC in there. Um, however, all six of the others, which are relevant to building out models, they've said, we want to take Battery Innovation Center, we want to replicate that model either at a state perspective or at a regional perspective. Uh, and so uh, I think that's a really awesome testament to what we've all done together here. So it's not just our team, it's, it's everybody that's in this room and who couldn't join us today. So I think that's awesome to see, again, that you know a company that had to restart, startup, has now come full turnkey to where uh, a national model uh, opportunity for how the U.S. has thought leadership and intentionally you know, starts to, uh, to, to be... I, uh, dare I say, I know some would say compete, I like that. I think we also have to cooperate um, from a global perspective. So to use a good friend of mine, uh, Woody Flowers, who unfortunately passed away, he's, he called that cooperation. It's used in FIRST Robotics and a bunch of other STEM events. So he called it cooperation. So how do we compete and how do we collaborate uh, as, as part of that? And so I think that's important and that's going to be one of our focus go forward. So with that, um, we will turn to the rest of the show. Ann Lathrop was named Executive Vice President of Global Investments for the IEDC. In her role, Lathrop reports to Secretary Brad Chambers and oversees domestic attraction and expansion, foreign direct investment and trade. She has served on multiple boards, including her current roles as Executive Committee Member of Visit Indy and Board President of the Indiana Youth Institute. She's a graduate of San Diego State University and has been recognized as both a woman of influence and a 40 under 40 leader by the Indianapolis Business Journal. Welcome to the stage, Anne Lethrop. Thank you. I will be brief. Um, good morning. I'm very happy to be here on behalf of the Indiana Economic Development Corporation and the state of Indiana. Um, as the executive vice president of Global Investments, I often get to talk to um, various industry and partner organizations, and honestly, some of our competitors, which has really been fun. They're trying to figure out what Indiana is doing because we are definitely on the map. I get to share a lot of great news about our top-ranked business climate, about our renowned universities and research institutions, about the influx of innovation and venture capital that has grown by 186% since 2021, exceeding a billion dollars. That's pretty amazing. About how we are now ranked fourth in the US for new clean energy development, and about how we were really recently named an emerging global, and I'll say that again, global destination for entrepreneurs and startups. 
across the country and in fact um, around the globe, I was just in Europe last week with the governor and secretary, they keep asking us, how are we doing this? Why are we seeing so much success during this unprecedented time of global challenges and economic change? And I will tell you, this is the fun part of my job. We are going and getting the economy we want in Indiana. We are not taking the economy that is coming to us. We're being just like all of you within your business. We're being laser focused. We're being very um, thoughtful about where we're spending our time, where we're investing our money. We are making sure that we are building that economy of the future that is gonna fuel innovation and create jobs for our kids and our kids' kids. That is really our big focus. That's why I jumped at coming and talking to you at the BIC today, because the Battery Innovation Center is the perfect example of all of this. We, along with many partners, made that strategic decision 10 years ago to invest in this sector and its future here in Indiana. And by investing in the BIC, we invested in industry leaders, entrepreneurs, future talent, research and development, innovation, and commercialization, and most importantly, an industry ecosystem that provides the resources, support, equipment, and expertise needed for growth. And the results have been significant. Just look around this room today. There are many, many representatives of companies and associations, defense contractors, university experts, and industry associations. We're all here not just with a shared interest, but a shared vision. When I was in Europe last week with the governor and secretary, we visited with an EV battery prospect who was extremely interested in the BIC. And they wanted to know who are the partners, how long it had been around, why we had decided to invest in this ecosystem so long ago. And they made a point to say that it put Indiana on the map as a competitive differentiator because we had gone all in in supporting this ecosystem. The BIC and the innovation you are leading is catapulting Indiana to the forefront of one of the most talked about and perhaps most in-demand sectors of electric vehicles. Within this last year, Indiana has seen companies like Toyota, Honda, Cummins, commit to building the next generation of electric and hybrid technologies in Indiana. Stellantis is ushering in a two and a half billion, billion dollar EV battery joint venture with Samsung SDI. The first location for Samsung SDI in the United States is here in Indiana with Stellantis. And in addition, Stellantis is also investing another 229 million in its Kokomo operations to support their goal of achieving 40% low emission vehicle sales in the US by 2030. General Motors, sitting next to a gentleman that I think said just retired from there, uh, announced plans to expand its 2.7 million square foot Marion Center campus to support their plans to build 1 million EVs by 2025. And in the last two weeks, an additional EV plant received final approval for state and local incentives in northern Indiana, and we hope to have an announcement in the coming weeks as the company makes their final decision. I hear this a little bit when I'm overseas, right? Some people tend to discount Indiana. Sometimes they ask me which I state we are, um, and they want to kind of think about the Midwest. But I will also say that the Midwest and Indiana are on fire, and we are definitely on the map. We don't believe that this trend's gonna, gonna turn. We think that we are gonna continue to be at the forefront of innovation and growth within the US. We are definitely well positioned in Indiana to lead the EV industry. We have a long history in the advanced energy sector, uh, energy storage sector, excuse me, particularly with electric and hybrid vehicle technology. We boast the second largest automotive industry in the US based on GDP with five OEMs in the state and a robust supply chain, and we're growing the expertise and talent needed to support the industry. 
and thanks in large part to our strategic investments in the BIC and the industry as a whole, we have the ecosystem and the partners that we need for success. Now, as I heard Ben say, there seems to be some companies that might be sitting in this room that have not yet invested in Indiana. Come join our party, it's a lot of fun. Um, all seriousness, let me be the first to invite you to come to Indiana, invest in Indiana. It is not a decision that you would regret at all. I'm not gonna bore you with some stats, well maybe a few, like how Indiana is one of the top 10 states for degree universities relevant to the EV battery manufacturing industry, or how Indiana is investing $100 million to build an EV charging network statewide, or how Indiana has one of the largest manufacturing sectors, putting your customers right here in your backyard. Nope, instead, you can just fly into the number one ranked airport in the country, Indianapolis. You can attend the greatest spectacle in racing, the Indianapolis 500, and you can be hosted by the number one host city as ranked by event planners. In all seriousness, we're very excited about the future of batteries and electric vehicles in Indiana, and even more so, the role that the BIC and all of you are going to play. I'm confident that you're really gonna to wanna to be a part of it, so welcome. Thank you very much. Rita Rogenbach is Senior Vice President and General Manager for the Transportation Business Unit for NI. She is responsible for accelerating the growth and positive momentum of the automotive test business with a focus on electric vehicles and advanced driver assistant systems. Rogenbach has more than two decades of experience in automotive business strategy and development. Welcome to the stage, Rita Rogenbach. Thanks for um, telling everybody it's over two decades. I am not that old. No, I'm kidding. Um, so first, thank you. Thank you so much um, to Ben and the big team. We're really, really happy to be here. Um, National Instruments uh, has really partnered up with BIC. Um, it's been a really great relationship we've had. And so I want to talk a little bit about what we're doing, how we're doing it, and really how BIC is helping us do that. So I'm Drita Rogenbuck. I am the SVP and GM of the Transportation Business Unit. Um, and I is actually uh, across multiple industries. So I'm here specifically on transportation, but uh, we also have aerospace defense as well as semiconductor, medical, and a lot of different other um, areas. So I want to first, uh, again, thank my team as well, because everybody's here working really, really diligently. Um, and we're excited to be part of the new evolution transformation that um, really automotive is going through. So just um, one thing, um, who here has been in an amusement park and loves roller coasters? OK, some daredevils. I love it. Um, I love roller coasters. So my niece, we were in, um, she's in Bradenton, Florida, and we were actually, um, I, I actually surprised her when I, going to college, and I said, what do you want to do as your last hurrah? And she said, I want to go to Bush Gardens. And I said, perfect, great, let's go, let's go have some fun. We wait patiently in line, we get up to, um, to the ride, and they stop the ride. And you hear all the disappointed people around you, and you're like, okay, me, I'm thinking, thank goodness, if they found a safety issue, I'd rather not be on the ride when they find it. She actually goes, hey, take a look at the operators. And she goes, hey, on the right side, you have an operator that's looking up at the screen and looking at the data. And as you look at the data, she already knows a sequence of how she's actually you know, setting up the, um, or shall I say, closing out the mechanisms, and she's got a sequence, and she's going quite fast, and she's using the data up there to be able to actually do what she needs to do. The other operator was probably trained appropriately, and she did what she needed to do as well, but she was quite, you know, slow in her, in her actual um, motion. And so when she sat there and she looked at it and she saw this about two, three times, she looked at somebody and said, I, I, it's amazing to watch how data actually is helping somebody make quicker decisions, be much more effective and efficient in what they're doing. Now, the ride went back on track and 
we actually had a lot of fun, so we were upside down, all good, and we, con we continue to move. But the great thing about the conversation is that even as she's entering college trying to understand, you know, how do you use data to become more efficient, she actually recognized that. And she was able to go, hey, there's a level of data that we can use that you can actually make quicker decisions, become more efficient, and actually improve performance. And if the data is readily available, you can do that pretty quickly. So what we're, going, what we're talking about here is really improving performance. So we've done a great survey across multiple industries. Uh, again, transportation, semiconductor, wireless, aerospace, defense, heavy uh, equipment, and we've actually gone in and said, what is it that you guys are trying to achieve? It's nothing new. Data's available all the time. There's really a need um, to understand how to obtain the data, how to actually analyze the data. So we're not talking about anything new. It's really about how do we build that ecosystem so we can quickly help our customers engage in what it means to actually obtain that data and then move forward. So, there's, again, a lot of different feedback on what is happening. And again, collecting data, analyzing data is not anything new. Typically, everybody wants to do it from the um, research and development all the way down, actually, to the customer. And so a lot of that feedback came back into the survey. So what did we find? 38% of participants actually um, did not use the data to inform their product design. Difficult to obtain the data difficult to use in the R&D portion and the development portion of it. And so they were just telling us that while there's a ton of data available, there really isn't a way to pull it into the initial development. 52% actually said, it's really hard once I store and capture it to actually pull it out of a system, because there's so many different systems that people interact with. If you don't know one system, it's difficult even for newer people because if you haven't been at the company for so long, there could be multiple systems you're interfacing with and learning. And then 51% actually said that they're trying to extract the test data, but they need to really use it earlier in the product life cycle. So again, more difficulty to extract that data and then use it earlier. So what are we trying to do? We're trying to actually help build a good product data strategy. And that's really part of analyze, add, and scale throughout the organization. Now, it's hard to say you're going to replace every system and build upon, you know, a, build a whole new software system. The whole goal is to actually give an end-to-end -end solution that today comes into the system and actually can work with all the different software solutions that are, that are in the um, environment today. And I is actually partnering directly with our OEMs, with our tiers, and we're bringing that performance from design and development all the way to production, and even in some cases, um, down to the end customer and back. Um, there's some situations where we're dealing, you know, where we're actually helping our customers through remanufacturing and concepts of this when it comes to when it comes to batteries. And so, when we look at this software connected test system, we actually have. Um, connected test systems solutions that have a good software stack that actually goes on top to be able to help our customers take that flow all the way down through their entire development to production and then back in to, again, easily be able to pull the data, analyze the data, and hopefully be able to make meaningful, quick decisions to improve performance. What's our unique uh, advantage, really? Again, what we're trying to help is in efficiency, improve performance, but really the benefit is faster time to market, improve the product quality, and lower cost. And so again, we've been able to connect into customer systems, we've been able to help within that ecosystem, and then we've been able to hopefully provide again analytics to quickly innovate and make those decisions. So I'm gonna give an example um, today, we're doing some end-to-end -end testing for batteries. And so if you take a look at everything that we're actually offering, um, we have a whole end-to-end -end, um, system software solution that goes from the battery testing itself in the lab all the way into the production environment and really even down to the grid. And so we're being able to take that, collect all that data across that entire flow, and then bring it back to our customer's use at any different point. And so, 
as a retired GM exec slash consultant slash um, entrepreneur extraordinaire. Steve Tarnowski is actually with us, but he was actually on the stage uh, at NI Connect. And uh, one of our key partners is General Motors, and we've been able to actually help um, connect into their systems, help the engineers become much more efficient in their innovation and be able to make faster decisions, insights, and decisions. So ultimately, what NI really wants to be able to help with is improving that performance, providing value add easily on top of systems that are currently existent, give an end-to-end software-tested um, solution, uh, but being able ultimately to help all of you and your teams be very, very successful. So again, I appreciate the time. Thank you so much for letting me uh, introduce NI and National Instruments. And again, thank you, Ben, and to the entire BIC team. Uh, we cannot do what we do every day without you guys. So thank you so much. Rod Sherman is a Senior Vice President of Caterpillar, Inc., with responsibility for the Electrification and Advanced Power Solutions Division. Rod oversees the creation of modular and scalable advanced power sources and electrified drivetrain product lines. This division enables Caterpillar to meet the wide range of customer needs, collaborate with other divisions to define machine and energy and transportation architectures that accommodate multiple power sources and drivetrains, and identify Caterpillar's role in the future value chain, including new services, growth opportunities. Welcome to the stage, Rod Sherman. Thank you, everybody. It's great to be back here in Indiana. Uh, for myself, a Purdue graduate, uh, born and raised in Indiana, and it's great to be back here with all of you again. Today, no slides to talk about, one of, but I want to tell you a little bit of story about Caterpillar, and I think what most people don't take for granted is kind of where we're at on the technology forefront and really the relationship we have with BIC that brought me here today is they're really helping us advance what we're doing in battery electric vehicles, construction equipment, mining equipment, and how we use that across our energy and transportation business at Caterpillar. But as you think through Caterpillar, for us, 150 locations worldwide, over 100,000 employees. One of those showcase facilities here in Lafayette, Indiana, just 60 miles north of here, celebrating 40 years. For myself, spent a good bit of time at that facility, really developing next generation large engines to really drive a more sustainable future for our customers that use them and really continue to improve the emissions output of, those, of that product. But today, I spent all my time working on alternatives to those internal combustion engines I spent so many years helping to, de to develop. And the key part about that is you think from a Caterpillar standpoint, what I would leave with you is when you think through our business and the breadth we touch, it's not just construction industries or large mining vehicles in our resource industries business or the energy and transportation sector, which covers electric power, marine, oil and gas, the rail business, our turbine business. Every customer we have in every one of those vertical industries is pulling on us today for electric alternatives for their products. You know, in the last week, I spent time with one of those customers talking through demand for a piece of a const construction equipment that we have available today that we can show up. And their immediate need was, as their commitment was to their shareholders to switch over and convert to electric is to have that proc show up and a product and a charger. And my comment to them was, we're simply not about giving you a product to commercialize, right? It's about our brand reputation and your brand reputation that's on the, on the line as we do this. Have you thought about how you solve your energy infrastructure problems? How can we help you solve that energy as a service problem and help go through that? And I think for us, that's our focus as we see the energy transition. It's really helping our customers build a better and more sustainable world and focus on a comprehensive end-to-end -end solution that drives that value form every day. And so as we think through energy transition for Caterpillar and battery electric is a huge part of that, it's also the, the work we do every day on low carbon intensity fuels, alternative fuels like hydrogen, gen sets we have today that run off 100% hydrogen that are being used by data center customers in the United States and available to customers around the world. But it's that continued commitment to really focus on end-to-end -end solutions for our customers that drive the value for them and drive the value that protects our brand in the marketplace. We think through today for where we're at from a technology standpoint, and most people would not know, 
Since 1996, we've had autonomous vehicles in operation. To this day, we've logged over 100 million miles at mine sites in autonomous vehicles. It's been billions of metric tons that have been moved at those mine sites autonomously doing that while helping customers reduce carbon emissions, improve safety, and have a more sustainable operation. But right now, we're on the forefront of doing 100% electric, 100% autonomous mine site operations in large electric vehicles and really work in our relationship with BIC to help us drive that forward. And that's the continued commitment we have in relationships like this, the ability to get on a network and partner with some of you that are here to continue that drive, that technology advantage forward, and to make the world a better place for our customers today and tomorrow. As we leave and kind of talk through this real quick, some quick background on Caterpillar, but maybe two challenges I think I have for all of us in the room and the thing I give myself every day and from a legacy Caterpillar employee perspective, you know, for us as we think through what we do going forward, a lot of pride that comes with everything we've done to, you know, serve, you know, to get through the past 95 years, but as we look where we're gonna be in 50 years, it's gonna come through partnerships that we form out of networking like this. Right, the partnerships we form with BIC, the partnerships we form with others that help us advance technology at a faster rate, and more importantly, as we make that world a better and more sustainable place, leverage those partnerships to, for the end customers that use them, right? for all of ourselves as we kind of move our businesses forward, and for more importantly, the people that we have that put those procs together every day to make the world a more sustainable place. And two, as we think through what we do to work to that network, how do we work together to leverage and influence regulation, partner with great states like Indiana to drive that technology forward, and to continue to drive the technology that we're being pulled on so quick every day. But with that, a couple things I wanted to leave with you about Caterpillar in a way that we can all work better together to make the world a more sustainable place. I thank you for your time, and thank you for the big team for giving us the opportunity to speak with you today. Thank you.